Hi, welcome to Dr. Brainways. I'm Dr. Rena Azar, and this is Dr. Susan Rochelle. This is a second in a series of videos on occupational asthma. I'm gonna make a point that I think is really important and impressive that Dr. Rochelle pointed out in the last video, and that is in one study done on an occupational asthma reagent, in other words, there was a, a location, a job location where people worked, and they developed asthma to one of the things they were working with. There were three groups of people that because they had that exposure changed some of those folks' life. So one group had asthma, which got worse when they were in their job, and then they got home, they still had asthma, but the symptoms were no longer a problem when they quit the job. The second group did not have asthma, got the asthma while they were at the job, had problems with the asthma, quit the job, and then the asthma went away. This is Schmook. And then the third group, and this is the impressive statistic, a third of the people that worked and had exposure to that had symptoms of asthma that had never had asthma before. And when they quit their job, they still had asthma. So that's a third of people in that group that ha now has asthma that did not have asthma before. And asthma is not just an inconvenient, I can't breathe problem. Asthma is a problem with a very important organ system in our body, the lungs. The lungs give us oxygen. And asthma causes disease and scarring potentially of the lungs and lifelong problems. So that's why it's going to be very important that Dr. Rochelle goes over today with us ways to identify if you might be or somebody you care about is in an environment that might cause an occupational related form of asthma. So again, so some of the industries where you may see this and one that Dr. Azar and I are very familiar with is healthcare workers, healthcare workers who develop latex allergy. So because of that exposure, they may have that. Also veterinarians, for an example, or fishermen or people in that industry, they may also develop symptoms because of the animal proteins that they are exposed to. And it is about the proteins under those circumstances. And when it comes to latex, it's also about the latex protein. So latex is Javier Brasiliensis is the natural rubber, and that is what we are allergic to. Now, when it comes to other things, for an example, in bakers, bakers have a sensitivity to not to the flour, but it's not the flour itself, it's the enzymes in the flour. And there are people that work in industry where they make plasticizers or hardeners, and there are chemicals in there, and one of those chemicals would be resins or isocyanates or insulation. Unfortunately, those things, those are irritants that can cause a person when they breathe it in to cause inflammation in their airways. The other thing that's interesting about those workers is that 10% of occupational asthma can occur in those exposed workers. So that can really be a problem. And then when they find that the length of time um, for the trigger to occur, it varies when it comes to people who have asthma. As I mentioned earlier, it can be some people, if they have very, very high exposure, they can have symptoms within 24 hours. That's usually because of the irritant effect of it. And then others, it may take months or several weeks before they develop symptoms. And again, as Dr. Azar commented on, the key thing is trying to identify this because people are frequently diagnosed because the symptoms are cough, wee, shortness of breath, chest tightness, the workers are frequently diagnosed as having bronchitis. When it isn't bronchitis at all, it's occupational asthma from the things that they are exposed to. Now, one of the things that we have done with many patients who have occupational asthma is we tell them to take their a device called the peak flow meter. And we tell them to check it first thing in the morning, the end of their work day, and then before they go to bed, and they do that for seven days. And then they do that when they are on vacation as well. So we can see, and I want them to document their symptoms at the same time, so I can see, is there a decrease in their peak flow readings when they're at work? And I would expect that if, it, if they did have occupational asthma, by day five of that work week, I, work week, I would expect their lung function or their peak flow readings to be lower. And so that's exactly what we see. What, because there isn't an easy way to make this diagnosis. It's very tedious. So then we record all that data so that we can show the, the employer. And I would tell you that nine out of 10 times the employer wants to work with you as their employee because you know the job. And uh, here's a little not well-known statistic that frequently takes 18 months to replace somebody after they have left the company. So to train somebody, it takes 18 months for them to be as good or 
um, or at half as good as the person that just had to leave. So they are willing to work with you. And it's important that it becomes a partnership, not just between you and the allergist or the pulmonologist, but also the employer and you. So those are important things to recognize. Now, so how do we treat it? The very, the number one thing is avoidant measures. So if we can move you to another area, for an example, and I have worked with employers over the years and who have successfully done that. So the person, they changed their environment. So the person who was obviously an extremely valued employee was able to maintain all of their benefits, maintain their position, but they worked in a different area of that factory or that business or that organization. So they were able to do that. Um, so that's going to be one thing. If the person does have asthma, then we have to treat with asthma medications. And I have had situations where people have had not just breathing issues, but skin issues and uh, found out that it was a chemical they were exposed to. So they moved them to a different department and they didn't develop any breathing symptoms as a result of that. So that is key. So we need to recognize that A, this is a real issue. Occupational asthma is a real issue. It can look just like asthma. In fact, in many cases, it is asthma. But the good news is that in that study that we talked to you about, 30% of those people actually... Um, a significant percentage of those did not have symptoms, but a third of those people that never had asthma went on to have persistent asthma mm -hmm. after they completely left that environment. So that's why, again, it's important. What we want for you is to recognize those symptoms as well as get it treated and get it diagnosed appropriately. And last thing that I want to say is, again, and you're, you're going to hear us tell you this all the time, what we want for you is to have incredibly great quality of life. And so if there's anything that's getting in the way of that, we need to work with you to get it under better control. Thank you for joining us today.